welcome in Iowa Hawkeye football fans to this brand new podcast. I am Luke Myers, and this is the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. Uh, just something I'm trying to start up here. I'm a big time Iowa fan. Love tailgating in Iowa City. More importantly, I love my Hawkeye football. And so I'll just kind of, since it's the first episode, I'll give you kind of a blurb of what's going to happen in these shows. So for the first couple minutes, I'll give a recap of the game. That happened the week before. Talk about scoring summary, stats, stuff like that. And then on game day, I go around and talk to people about what's happening at their tailgate, what they think of the Hawks, what the projection for the rest of the season will be. And so uh, we'll get right into it here as the Hawkeyes took on Wyoming last weekend in their first game of the year. And it was a little scary to start. We got Nathan Stanley, first time quarterback. We've had we've been lucky over the last couple of years with CJ Beathard back there. He was stable behind center, had a cannon of an arm. But uh, it was a rough first quarter, and you could kind of tell that the offense had trouble clicking with a bunch of new pieces coming in. Lost LaShawn Daniels as well last year. But uh, first quarter was tied 0 0. One thing you could tell after the first quarter is the defense is going to keep us in every game. They were pretty much unstoppable. I don't know if they missed a tackle the entire first quarter. But in the second quarter, Cooper Roth, Roth got the game scoring underway with a 49-yard field goal for Wyoming. And you can kind of feel a little sense of uneasiness in the crowd in Kinnick Stadium. But uh, the Hawkeyes did respond nicely to end the second quarter and did have the lead before the half. Fourth and goal with five minutes to go in the first half. Stanley connected with Noah Fant for a two-yard touchdown on that drive. Two fourth down conversions, pretty big. Like seeing that anxious Kirk Ferentz go for it. Fourth down, he did it three times, I believe, in this game, so that was big. But then later on in that second quarter, a huge whiffed punt by Wyoming's punter gave Iowa prime field location with uh, around 30 seconds to go before the half. And a uh, player two later, uh, Stanley delivered a dime to Fant in the ends, or around the five-yard line, and Fant took it in for a touchdown. And that was huge as Iowa le- led 14-3 to at the half. Uh, really kind of swung momentum there and gave the Hawkeye fans at least a little sense of, okay, we're fine, the offense is starting to click a little bit. And then with going into the third quarter, Iowa led 14-3, uh, 5.34 to go, easily reels in a pass that was really a pretty excellent pass from Stanley just over the fingertips of the defensive back, and he took it to the house, a uh, good little broken tackle around the five-yard line and fought and dove right over that goal line for the touchdown, Iowa led 21-3, to and then new kicker Miguel Racinos drilled a 44-yard field goal with ease, a beautiful low liner that Split the uprights. Look, it looked like it would have been good from easy 55, but that pushed the lead to 24 to three, and the Hawkeye defense took it from there. Uh, they played great on this day. This this defense looked maybe best in the Big Ten, led by Josie Jewell and our linebacking core is solid. But these young defensive backs really came out and performed well today. But uh, Hawkeyes win the game, 24 and three. More importantly, improved to one and zero. As we take a look at some of the stats in this game, Nathan Stanley's first game wasn't necessary. It wasn't a bad game. He, he performed well, eight of 15, 125 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, and I think two fumbles. Uh, one of the fumbles came on a broken play. They audibled down. It should have been a stretch to the short side of the field. Stanley turned to the wide side of the field, and he just got smoked. Not much you can do there, but he performed well. I think I saw something. Stanley's the third or second Hawkeye quarterback to throw three touchdowns in his first game ever. The other one, the other quarterback being the great Ricky Stanzi. So that's a great name to be put to right next to right away after your first game. Wadley had a quiet 24 carries on a, and 116 yards. James Butler coming in. He was kind of a Sean Green esque running back. He didn't fall backwards. At all, I don't think he was falling ahead, getting up some good chunk yards, averaged 4.7 yards per carry, 10 carries, 47 yards for him. Nick Easley really kind of exploded in this game, making some nice catches, reach, reaching behind the defensive back to make one. And then, of course, the 45-yard touchdown. He had four receptions, 77 yards, and that touchdown. Noah Fant, two receptions, two touchdowns, fantasy stud. 
Go pick him up if you're in any college fantasy football leagues. He also dropped one down the middle, but he got hit pretty hard on that one. But <clears throat> fans had a good day, looking like your typical Iowa tight end. And then the return of Matt Vandenberg wasn't targeted much earlier in the game. Ended up with two receptions, 19 yards. But the offense did enough to come away with the win. But let's not overlook this defense. Josie Jewell bringing in a national award this week, getting Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week right off the bat. He had 14 tackles and two sacks. Ben Neiman, 13 tackles. Bo Bauer, 11 tackles. And Josh Jackson in the secondary did a very nice job. He got beat on one play, but luckily the Wyoming wide receiver must have rubbed some butter on his hands before that play because just fell right out of it. Got a break there, but Jackson did very well aside from that play. And Epineza... A highly recruited guy for Iowa. His dad used to play for the Hawks. He had his first career sack, so that was nice to see. But this quarterback coming in for Wyoming, Josh Josh Allen, a lot of hype around him. The Hawkeyes did an amazing job of shutting him down. 23 of 40, 174 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. They really had him running all day. There was a play where the Hawkeyes chased him to the left and all the way to the right. Josie Jewell eventually said that's enough of that and took him down for the for the sack. And then great front seven we knew that was going to be there when we the season started the front seven for the Hawkeyes is phenomenal it usually is they only allowed 59 rushing yards on the game Hawkeyes improved to 1-0 and uh, and they looked kind of how I expected defense good special teams was surprisingly really good if you ask me and the offense was a little shaky but they'll figure it out they're clicking a little they got to click a little bit late as the game went on uh, and now we're going to move into the interviews with, uh, I believe there were six or seven interviews I did. Went around uh, before the game, talked to some people about the Hawkeyes, what's going on at their tailgate, some food they got going. So uh, enjoy those interviews. We are with our first interviewer of the hey, year, Mr. Zach Koontz. How you doing, Zach? We're doing great. It's week one. Go Hawks. So uh, what, do you, what, what do you think of the Hawkeyes this year? You know, I think they're gonna they're gonna be tough. Good defensive uh, defensive line, good offensive line. Should uh, pound the rock a little this year. So obviously, Akram Wadley. Who else are you looking forward to? You know, I want to see what the receivers can do. I think uh, Matt Vandenberg is gonna be solid. I want to see a young guy step up. James Butler, grad transfer. I think he's gonna have a he's gonna have a big year as well. Thousand yards. And Stanley, how about him? You know, it's a big question mark, but uh, I think he'll be all right. Ferris does well with first year quarterbacks. I think uh, I think Stanley's gonna be he's gonna be good. All right, so where are you gonna be tailgating at today? Well we're gonna be a little bit of everywhere. Uh, probably be behind the pedestrian bridge, uh, hanging out with my, my main man, Al, Al Heiberger. He's a big baller, we all know that. All right, any last remarks? You know, go Hawks, I'm predicting uh, nine and three on the year. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year. All right, that was Zach Koontz. Next on the Hawkeye Tailgate Report is Al Heiberger. How you doing, Al? Good. How are you, Luke? I'm doing great. So what do, what do you think of the Hawkeyes this season? Uh, hopefully they're going to be a surprise and uh, be good this year. Are there, get us to another bowl. Are there any players you're looking out for? Interested to see how Stanley's going to be. Stanley? All right. Now, there's a lot of debate around here this morning what the first play is going to be in the game for Iowa. Do you think it's a run or a pass? Pass. Oh, he's saying pass, folks. Pass. It's been a popular opinion this morning for run. Uh, but what are, you, what are you thinking here for the Hawkeyes record-wise this season? Uh, hopefully uh, they win all the games they should win and play, uh, play the big games close. Maybe have a two-loss season or something. Oh, that would be great. That's better than what I predicted. But uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you got going here at your tailgate this morning? Good old Holy Cross locker, smoked sausage, scrambled eggs with Canadian bacon in it, uh, screwdrivers, and bush light. Oh, good old bush light. Nothing more Iowa than that. And shout out to Holy Cross right there. But uh, uh, who, who do you got here with you today at the game? A lot of friends and family. Should be a great time out here in Iowa City. Uh, game coming up here at noon. Should be a good one against Wyoming. We are now with Mr. Brad Coates. How are you doing today, Brad? Hey, not too bad. Okay, so what what do you think of the Hawkeyes this season? Well, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. You know, hopefully today will tell a story, you know. You know, we got a good team, Wyoming, coming in here today and hopefully uh, pull out a victory, I guess. 
All right, so aside from Malcolm Wadley, is there really anybody on the, the team that you're really just really excited to watch play? Um, kind of excited to see Vandenberg back, you know. He was a big part of our team last year. Oh, my God, yes. All right, so for tailgating today, what have you been doing? Uh, just uh, sucking on a few captains. That's about it, you know. You got, you got any food back there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got all kinds of food. Uh, we're going to have uh, the famous uh, Chicago Dogs here after uh, after the game, so stop on over for a Chicago Dog. All right. Well, that sounds great. Uh, go enjoy the game and go Hawks. Hey, we will do. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Thank you for staying tuned to the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. I'm Luke Myers. What's your name? Uh, Joby Hike. All right, Joby. So what do you think of the Hawkeyes this season? Uh, I think it's one of those years that uh, we're kind of flying under the radar. Um, seems like every time we do that, we have a special season. Yeah, usually whenever I was like, everybody thinks they're going to suck, they pull something out of their ass and they make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we got a good core returning. Um, some young guys that will prove themselves that before Big Ten season, and we could have something that uh, turns into a good season. So is there any other player? Like, obviously, Wadley's going to be exciting. Vandenberg, who else are you looking for? Um, I think Stanley. I think he has a lot to prove. Um, he's definitely talented. He just doesn't have the experience. Um, and I'm really excited to see what Butler has. I think it's Butler for uh, the, the transfer from Nevada. And it's been a hot topic around tailgates this morning. What's the first play going to be for Iowa? I say pass. Uh, it'll it'll be a, a yeah it'll be a, a play action bootleg um, to the tight end in, in the flat. Love where your head's at right there. So what do you got going at your tailgate this morning? Uh, a lot of cold beer, uh, good good company, and uh, a lot of fun. So. Are you around some of your like college friends, or what's going on here? Yeah, we got uh, friends back from four different states. Um, Going to get after it and, and have a good time. So. All right, well, thanks, and go Hawks. Go Hawks. We are now with Adam McLaughlin. How are you doing today? Fantastic, Luke Myers. It's always a great day when there's Hawkeye football in the air. Especially when you're around, Luke Myers. <laughs> so uh, what, what are your expectations for the Hawks this year? You know, I'm just going to be happy with the bowl game. You say 9-3, and three, I don't buy it one bit. I'm going to go, uh, sorry, I'm going 6-6. Six and six. That's, a, that's a tough break right there. We're going to see a lot of tough breaks this year. But we're going to win a couple games that will be good. We'll, we'll throw on the field a couple times. But. Do you think we win one, like, against Wisconsin, Penn State, or Ohio State? We'll win one of those games, but we'll lose a couple ones. Could lose today, might lose next week. I'm sorry to break it to you. Hey, it happens sometimes, but I think the Hawks, Hawks pull it out. So aside from, like, Wadley and Vandenberg, who are some players you look forward to seeing? Are there any other players on the team? Oh, there's – oh, Nathan Stanley, Josie Jewell, Noah Font. There's tons of them. We're going to run the ball. It's going to be Wadley, Butler, is that right? Yeah, Butler. It's going to be all those guys, like 90% of the touches, those two. All right. It. There's been a Maybe lot – Maybe fans. Maybe fan a little bit. There's been a lot of buzz around here. And from your last response, I'd say you're thinking run. But first play of the game for Iowa, what do you got? Pass or run? Don't overthink it. Run up the middle. Go. Three yards, cloud of dust. Do it, Luke. So what uh, what, what have you been doing at your tailgate this morning? I've just been looking for you for the last two hours. Where you been? I'm sorry. I've been moving around a little bit here. But uh, you, you got some food going over there or anything? Got some uh, sausage here from your buddies. Appreciate that. Yeah, little breakfast yeah. pizza down the road. All right. That's, I'm good. All right. Well, hope the Hawks get the W today and kind of defy the odds like what you're saying right here. We will win today. I'll put it that, but sorry to say next week could be a little, could be a problem. All right. Well, go Hawks. Go Hawks, Luke. We are now with Kelly. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's always a great day when there's Iowa football in the air. So uh, what are you thinking for the Hawkeyes this season? I think we're going to kick some butt. Your friend Adam right here said they're going to go 6-6. Six and six. What do you think about that? I would agree. I agree. Do you have a favorite player on the team? Um, Not this year, no, I don't. We got some new players, so maybe I'll have a new favorite. Yeah, it's not like the days where you had Sean Green, Adrian Claiborne, those guys out there. But uh, So what do you guys got going on in your tailgate here? Well, we took it easy this year, this season. We just started off with some breakfast pizzas, but we got, you know, plenty of drinks and for the adults and the kids, and uh, just now getting ready to head in and cheer them on. Yeah, the kids got to have fun, too. But uh, where are your seats at today? 
Um, where are our suits at today? You're tailgating. <laughs> I'm just tailgating. There's my, no problem with that. Yeah, my kids and my husband go to the games. I'm just here to support them. Hey, that's fine. You got to have fun too, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, and go Hawks. Go Hawks. We are now with Rush. How are you doing? Okay. It's always a great day when Hawkeye football is in the air. Good. Always a good day. So what are you thinking for the Hawkeyes this season, record-wise? Hopefully they're going to be better than last year. Yeah, last year was a little up and down. There were some good wins, but some bad losses last season. Very bad, yes. So you're telling me you work for Mitch King, former Hawkeye great. How, what's that like? Uh, he's a pushover. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pushover. Wow, I don't think I would have ever figured that. But uh, do you see him a lot or talk to him a lot? I see him every day, yes. How is it? Just... Uh, it's all right. He, he's he got a property management business, and he runs it well. So you, you pretty much get your way all the time since he's a pushover? I, I get my way however I want it, yes. <laughs> all right. So do you come a lot to a lot of Iowa games? I've got season tickets. You do? All right. Where are your season tickets at? South End Zone. How long have you had them? Uh, several years. All right. Well, that's good to hear. I always like to see loyal Hawkeye fans coming, no matter good or bad. Yep. Uh, but all right, that's all I had for you. And thanks, and go Hawks. Go Hawks. And now as we look ahead to the next week against the Iowa State Cyclones, Hawkeye fans, this Iowa State offense looked pretty darn good against you and I. Uh, I don't know what to say. I really didn't see it coming. Jacob Park, their quarterback, 27-35, to 35, 271 yards, two touchdowns in that first game. He did a really good job of finding a lot of different wide receivers. There was uh, seven different people caught a ball out of the backfield. And the running game did pretty well, too. David Montgomery had 14 carries for 82 yards and two touchdowns. Mike Warren had 12 carries for 33 yards. Those, so this team coming up right here in the si- battle for the Cyhawk Trophy, it's not looking like last year where it was a complete and utter blowout in favor of the Hawkeyes. That was a great game. I'm sure this one will be a great game, too, in terms of it will keep the fans involved the whole time, but it is in Ames. So if you have the chance to go out there, go out there and cheer out the Hawks. The Hawkeyes will be coming in. Hopefully their offense will start to click a little more, trying to find a rhythm. Uh, I think they can do it. But that is all for this episode of Hawkeye Tailgate Report. Uh, I'll come out with these after every home game at least. We might have one next week after Iowa State. But thanks for listening, and go Hawks!